section 4.2 doesn't have any new vocabulary, but the skill that they want us to be able to do is to change a decimal to a fraction. So I've laid out some of the exercises for section 4.2. The number 1 starts out with 0 0.83. And how I teach this is I just have you read the number. So this would be 83 tenths, hundredths, so 83 hundredths. And so when we say it, we write it. 83 hundredths. So we just put 83 over the hundred. Number two, same principle. We have 0.37, so we would read it as 37 hundredths, and we would write it just the same way. Now once we do that, we need to then see if we can simplify or reduce these fractions. Both of these previous problems, we can't do that. In problem number three, though, we can. We have 0.65, and that's going to become 65 hundredths. But you'll notice they both end with either a 0 or a 5. So using our rules that we learned in chapter 3, we can then go ahead and reduce that by 5. We do it to the top, we're going to do it to the bottom. So reducing by 5 fifths. So how many 5's in 65? 13. How many 5's in 100? 20. So that's going to reduce to 13 twentieths. So what the skill then is going to be when we read the number, we simply write it as a fraction. So how would that play out if I had three numbers? So let's say we had 0.653. All right, so we would have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So we would have 653 over 1,000. Okay, and then we check to see if we can reduce. As we continue down the page, if I can get it to continue down the page here, it seems to be stuck. There we go. We're adding additional problems. Here we have just 0 0.32, so again, 32 hundredths. Now we're adding whole numbers with it. So 10 and, so 10, the whole number is always going to be the whole number. 41 hundredths. Check to see if we can reduce. Back on problem 8, we need to reduce, don't we? So, we both even, so I know that 2 goes in. So let's do it that way in a couple of steps. I did not pick the biggest one on purpose just to practice. So how many 2's in 32? That's going to be 16. 2's in 100? 50, correct. But again, it's still both even, so I could have reduced it further. So again, they're both by 2. So that's 8 25ths. And at this point, we're done. We can't reduce any further. Also need to check, can we reduce 41 hundredths? Well, 40, 41 is prime. So that's a good indication that we're not going to be able to reduce that or simplify. Problem number 15, we have 12 and 24 hundredths. So again, the whole number is going to stay the whole number. The 24 hundredths, as we write it as a fraction, we say it, we write it. And then check to see if we can reduce. Well, I know that 4 goes into both 24 and 100, so let's take 4 this time to see if that was the biggest one. 4 goes into 24, 6. 4 goes into 100, 25. And we are reduced the whole way. So then our total answer then is going to be 12 and 6 25ths. Another skill they have us doing there on that section is to order decimals from smallest to biggest. The first section on problem number 21, it's pretty straightforward. No tricks or weird stuff going on there. We have 7 tenths, 1 tenth, and 4 tenths. Since they're all the same, they're all tenths, we just can simply value those. Well, obviously, 0 0.1 is going to go before 0.4 that's going to go before 0.7. Again, you can put the zeros in front or not. Proper form usually has them, but they're not wrong if they're not there. And so that would be the answer. When we get to 27, they start to throw you a little bit of a curveball. 
just have to go things slow and easy. I like to put things in order vertically as we've done before, so I'm going to rewrite this in a little bit different way. Okay, when I order them in that direction, you'll notice that this one is just tenths and both of these, excuse me, hundreds, these are both to the thousand spot. So I can make them the same by adding a zero at the end. I didn't change the value at all. But now all of those have three decimal spots. So once I have those in there, I now can value each column. So I'm looking at the columns. So everything's 333 three, three there. This is 112. So obviously these are going to be smaller than the two. But we can also look at them in groups of three, since we all have three spots behind the decimal. I have 179, 185, and 260. See, that zero made quite a difference when I put it in when we could read the numbers so they're all the same. Then we can know that this one's going to be the smallest, so this is going to go first. Then we're going to have 3.185 and then 3.26. We don't need the zero, didn't hurt anything if we wanted to put it on, but we don't need it because we're ordering the original numbers. We can also do that when we have lots of numbers here. Again, I like to put these into the vertical columns. So I'm going to rewrite this so I can line them all up. 77.0470 point zero four seven point zero four six point zero four seven zero one five so you can see those are all over the map there so how do we fix those up again I would strongly recommend that we fill these in with zeros okay now we can compare them equally because they're now all the same so as we're going here, remember we're trying to get them smallest to biggest, so we take each column at a time. So everything is zero in this first column, so that's the same. Everything's four in this column, so that's the same. So up until this point, all of these are exactly the same. So now then we can look at the parts that aren't. I've got 7,700, I've got 7,007, 7,000, 6,000, and 7,015. So then as we're ordering, obviously the 6 is going to come first, and we're going to order that original number. So that's going to be our first one. So now we've taken care of that, so we can just kind of take it out of our mix. And then we have 7,000. That's going to be before 7,007. So we're going to have 0 .047. So that's again the original number. Then we're going to have this one, so we cross that one out. That one's going to be our next one. Cross that one out. See how this is working then, how it's easier to see that when, if we go this process. Our next one's going to be, I'm just saving paper writing there. And then last but not least. Okay, we've ordered them up, we've lined them up, and I think that's a pretty easy way to do that. The last skill in this section here is that they're asking to see if these are equivalent, if this is a true statement. So again, I like to compare. So I have 0.38 and 0 0.3. So I have two spots behind the decimal. I'm going to make this two spots behind the decimal on this side. So now I can decide, is 38 or 38 hundredths smaller than 30 hundredths? And, well, we can see that 30 is not larger than 38, so this would be false. See, if we line them up, we can compare. So on problem 37, I have 3.1231, 3.1213. So again, I would kind of compare each number at a time. Three threes, that's the same. One, one, that's the same. Two, two, that's the same. And so now we're down comparing 31 to 13. See, we compared everything that's the same. That's the same over there. That's the same over here. So now we're just comparing. Is 31 less than 13? No. So again, that would be false. 
So I would recommend making sure they're all the same, taking off the things that are equal on both sides of the inequality, and then comparing the sides or the numbers that aren't. Have fun with the homework.